Well, today I'm talking about how to encourage yourself in the Lord. I think we mostly all can learn how to, or enjoy learning how to do that, right? How many of us need to do that sometimes? Encourage yourself in the Lord. Yeah, we're in a world today that's amazing. It's different than anybody could have even imagined five years ago, ten years ago. So we are in a world of trials, tests, tribulations, right? They have old honky-tonk songs about that, trials, tests, and tri tribulation. But those things are all common to man. And, God, and Jesus, when he was here on earth, he was even tempted in all of them. And he's here with us. So we are in the world, but not of the world. We have to prepare ourselves with the mindset of, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We need to be ready and be prepared ahead of time for whatever life holds. Because <clears throat> a lot of times things just kind of sneak up on us, don't they? And if we're not ready, what happens? You know? So the way to get ready is what I want to talk about today. How we can be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Because we can. And you don't have to... I always tease my uh, daughter-in-law when she was having problems with her kids or something, I said, don't worry, by the time you're 50, you'll have it all figured out. And now I'm like, you know, 70 something. And I still don't have it all figured out. But the point was, life goes on and you learn things and you look, God helps you be stronger and God gives you wisdom. And by the time you're older, that's a curtain up here that keeps falling down. By the time you're older, you have a lot more wisdom, hopefully. Because if we don't, we're in trouble. If you need wisdom, come to our Thursday morning Bible, Friday morning Bible study. That's what we're studying from the book of Proverbs. Okay, I have a saying that my daughter Joanna has used. I, th I was really proud of her one day when she said it. I thought, wow, this really soaked into her. When I was working, I had a little plaque, <clears throat> excuse me, up on my wall that a guy that we knew had calligraphied. And it was a saying by Robert Schuller. It said, tough times never last, but tough people do. And I had that right in my office. So when I was having a hard time, I'd look at that and I'd go, okay, this tough time is not going to last, but Lord, I am not a tough person. I mean, you know how you feel when you're just, things hit you and you're just beat up. And But what God said to me, probably the first time I said that, he said, you're not tough, but in me you are. It's like, yeah, tough people in the Lord. Tough times really don't last. We always tell people, oh, it'll be over soon. Don't worry about it. But when you're in the middle of that, it doesn't feel like it's over soon, does it? All that stuff Carrie dealt with in the past was, you know, over like a year's time. But I look back now, and that was just momentary in our life. And that's the way things are. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a frog in my throat. <clears> throat> Anybody see it? Ah! <laughs> anyway... So that has been a really valuable thing for me to remember. Tough times never last. We don't, God would not allow that in our life. He loves us so much. And that's partly what we want to talk about is getting to know God so much that even in the midst of a tribulation or a test or a trial, you are confident in your, in your God. He is some of those songs we sang today. Lord, lift me up on eagle's wings. You know, he's the only one that can do that. I will rise on eagle's wings as I wait for him. And there's so many songs. That, he that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall man up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not fade. Of course, those are scripture that people turned into songs. That one's in Isaiah. So what should we do every day that will help us be ready for those tough times that might come? Um, <clears throat> as some Carrie says all the time, what's the first thing we should do every day? Pray, meet with God. Even if while you're still in bed, you just say, oh, good morning, God. Even if your body's going, oh, I don't think I'm going to wake up yet. You know, thank God for the people that are retired. I really praise God for being retired because if I want to just lay there some more, I can usually. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of us are like, yes. Um, but we still, while we're laying there, all cuddled in our nice warm blankets, we can just say, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you so much for the sleep I had last night. Thank you for this warm house that I live in, that I'm not out in the bushes somewhere, that I'm not homeless, that I don't live in a country that has <clears throat> no fresh water. 
you know, or something. Because we talked about that a lot too, how so many countries, the, the women go miles to go get buckets of dirty water to bring back for their families to drink and wash in and everything else. And hey, yet there's a lot of missions out there that are dr drilling holes, drilling wells for people in those countries. And I just think that's so precious. Because to us, we normally, we wake up and pretty soon it's like, oh, I think I'll go take a shower. We walk in there, we have hot water, we have light, we have soap, we have towels, nice fluffy towels. And so many people don't, they don't have that. And so when we wake up in the morning, we really just can be, we can be thankful to, for just the basic things we have, for our heat, for our blankets, for our coats, for our food, for our clean water. So... That's number one. Meet with God first thing every morning. Um, and I said we need to keep it fresh. Sometimes I used to get in a rut. I don't think I do as much anymore. But a lot of times we get stuck in a religious to-do list kind of. Okay, I'm going to wake up in the morning and say, good morning, God. Then I'm going to get up and I'm going to get my coffee. And then I'm going to read my Bible so I can check it off my list. And then I might read a devotional. And then I'm going to do my stuff. But that's, that can become really um, boring because we're just doing it to check it off the list. We need to really let God keep it fresh. And some of the ways to do that are, um, you know, good devotionals are good. What I'm really enjoying is a different version of the Bible because I pretty much grew up with King James. Then I was into New King James. And then I think we had New American Standard at one of the churches I was at. And then I found out about the Amplified Bible, and oh, I still love that. And it's a little overwhelming sometimes to some people because it's, it, every word is multiplied by the Greek meanings. And, and I love that because I love to read anyway. <clears throat> but sometimes that's too much for people. Anyway, I love the Amplified. Um, then somebody told me about the Passion Translation, Mr. Marvin. And that's a really good one, too. It right now just has the New Testament and I think Psalms and Proverbs. But boy, read, oh, and Song of Solomon. Ring, read Song of Solomon in the Passion Translation. That, we always think of it as worldly, kind of, you know, man to woman. But when you read that, as God is reading it, is telling you, it just shows his, I mean, I get chill bumps thinking about it. It shows his love for us so much. How he can't wait to meet with us. He wants to run with us and enjoy life with us. And when you read that, it's, it becomes so real. That's God's heart to us. He wants to be so close to us that every minute of every day, not just when we first wake up in the morning and say, good morning, God. But every minute of every day, we know he's right here with us. In fact, sometimes when I either read something funny or tell Carrie something funny, I kind of laugh. And, and sometimes, and probably some of you have experienced that too, I can kind of hear God laughing with me like, yeah, that was really funny. You know, because he's got a good sense of humor. Sometimes we think of him as up there being solemn, the judge. But the more you get to know him, the more he, he truly is our daddy. We honor him and we worship him as God Almighty, <clears throat> but he's also our daddy father and our friend and our brother. And as we understand the wholeness of God, that, that he sent his Holy Spirit to be with us all the time and guide us and protect us and um, help us keep our minds on him, we have everything we need in the Lord. And he gladly gave it to us and he wants us to have it. But we won't get it if we don't ask, if we don't try. One of the things I like to do in the Bible, the ladies at Bible study hear this all the time, is I like to underline or circle all the words when I'm reading them of things I have to do, like wait, uh, walk, do, um, any of those action words. Those are what I'm supposed to do. And then there's a lot of words too that says what God already did for us. Loved, gave, uh, provided, and I love those words because they're so full of meaning. They're not just words. They're God speaking to us when we read the word. So I like to have, this is my favorite, one of my favorite pens. It's got five colors in it, all in one. And I have a set of uh, highlighters. And I like to keep those with me all the time because this pen doesn't go through the Bible pages so I can underline and write and circle. 
And then, of course, the highlighting. I like to use green for growth. If it's a verse that I need to um, remember so I can grow better, I do it in green. If it's like, oh, God, that's so cool, praise you, I do it in yellow because that's like a praise color. And you don't have to do that, but you can kind of pick out colors maybe that when your eyes, someday you're just kind of, oh, what should I read today? And you um, open your Bible somewhere and, oh, you see this, this yellow writing that says, yes, because God is your refuge, the high God, your very own home. Evil can't get close to you. Harm can't get through the door. Like, yes. You know, so when we read things and study, those things get planted in our heart. The, the word of God is living and alive and water for our souls. And it's even a, a weed eater for the flesh that tries to come up. If we have the word of God in our heart and we think we want to do something that's in our flesh, all of a sudden we're going to get a check in our spirit going, uh-uh, no, no, no. It's like, okay. Especially maybe something as simple as buying something and you shouldn't really, you know, or um, going somewhere and yet, you know, God really needs you to stay home that day for some reason. Just really listening to his voice. He really does guide us. And the more we feed on his word, the more those things will pop up in us when we need it. And I used to read sometimes, like reading through the Bible I did a couple years and when I'd get done with um, numbers or some of the Old Testament books, I'd go, well, I don't think I got anything out of that today. Who begot who begot who begot who? Even though they're very important. And it's cool when you really can study it. But when I read it, like as a day by day, my daily reading, I thought, okay. But you know what God told me then? He said, you know what? My word is alive. My word is real. When you read even things like that, it's still the word of God and you're feeding yourself. And I thought, well, that's really cool. So that kind of helped me through those harder reading times. Uh, let's see. God gave us life and that abundantly. All we have to do is learn what that is because a lot of people think God just gives us bad things if we don't behave, you know, and I think we all know here that God is good. And he never would give us bad things. He's not a child molester, you know. But some people don't know that. And we need to let them know. God is so good. He wants to give us everything he provided for us. He made this world for us. He made the animals for us. We love our, our dogs and our birds and our pets. And even just sitting outside <coughs> listening to the birds. You know, God gave those things for our pleasure. He gave us colors to see. And we talk all the time about people that have gone to heaven and how they can't even describe what they see there. But while we're here, God gave us so much that will bless us if we just look at it through his eyes and realize he gave that to us. Beautiful flowers. Carrie brings me every morning a couple little roses. We have a rose bush that blooms like all year. And he brings two little, at least two little roses in and they smell so good. And he says, this is you and me. And, but those are from God. And he knows that. He says, this is from God and me, you know, and Ah, oh, beautiful. But anyway, all those things are from God. He gave us those things richly to enjoy. Someday you guys have to go to Linda's house probably in the springtime. And oh, the flowers and the fragrances are so beautiful over there. She's got plants that I would probably normally only see in a, uh, not a museum, but what would you call it? A, a garden, you know, a fancy garden. She's got beautiful plants. God gave her a, a green thumb. <laughs> But anyway, he gave us those things to enjoy. He really did. And whatever your interests are, maybe you love the smell of wood. My dad was a carpenter, and, and Marvin knows that too. When you cut wood, you know, you saw wood, it smells so good, you build things out of it. God gave us those things. And it's just amazing to realize that it's all here because of him for us to enjoy. Okay. And God wants to enjoy us. Do you know that? That just... Like I said, that um, Song of Solomon in the Passion Translation blew me away because I already knew and I've really had a wonderful relationship with God the last few years especially. But he wants to enjoy us. He loves our presence. He loves going where we go and doing what we do and giving us ideas like cooking. You know, a lot of times Carrie will cook something for dinner or I will and we're, we sit down and eat it and go, oh boy, that is so good. And neither one of us are going, whoa, didn't we do a great job? Because we know it was God 
um, given us ideas. I mean, we have like a ton of spices at our house. Our daughter-in-law came over <clears throat> one day, Abby, and she was looking in our cupboards for, you know, Asian sauces and things to make something for us. She would said, whoa, this is like a grocery store. <laughs> we have a lot. So it's fun to experiment with that, but sometimes you don't really know what goes together, but God does. And so we cook these things and we just go, oh, God, that is so good. That is amazing. You know, and it's just really fun seeing God in every single thing we do. We used to always talk about how he always would provide um, a parking spot. He had to have a parking spot when we need it. And that's true and that's good. And I think that's kind of back when we all were just starting to realize, man, God is with us all the time, giving us everything that we need. And that seems like a basic thing, but we knew it was God that did it. And from then on, we've all been having our eyes open more and more and more and just seeing him work in so many areas. And it's, it's really cool. So I want everybody else to be there too. So read your word, read your word, read your word, pray. Okay, he wants to enjoy us and he wants us to enjoy him. I can sometimes hear him laugh as I get tickled about something. Okay, now this is just a little, um, something I learned a long time ago. And I said, take time to pray. And if you want to know, like, some guidelines, of course, we always just pray what's in our heart. But they used to say Acts, admiration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Just remember Acts, the book of Acts, which is kind of what we're in still now because we are the church. Anyway, adoration, that's the best thing to do for God when we first meet with him is just praise him and adore him and thank him. After that confession, which... Probably won't take very long, but you can say, Lord, if I've done anything to offend anybody, help me remember so I can go and, and talk it out with them and be forgiven and, and them forgive me. And then Thanksgiving, that's one that can go on forever. And I always talk about a book of remembrance. And I don't have one yet, but I still think it'd be, it'd be a great idea. <laughs> but I'm more, <clears throat> just kind of put everything in my journal, my daily thing. Because if we write down things that God did for us, then we can go back and look at all those things. And when we're having a hard time, that's a way to encourage ourselves in the Lord is remember what he did for us already in the past, how he provided our needs, how he opened a door that we didn't think would be open. I mean, this whole property is God, a God thing. He really did every bit of it. And we can give you the testimony sometimes, but it's a miracle. And it's God, only God could have done it. And that's what he does with us. If we, um, we have so many things to thank him for all day, every day. So we really need to do that and not just, oh, thanks God, brush it off and be on our way. Because I think the more conscious we are of what he's done for us and our thanks to him, we start seeing more and more and more things. And then supplication is S, A-C-T-S, supplication. And that's interceding for people. You know, we have people at our church that need prayer. We have people that, relatives of our people. We have neighbors. We have things we read on Facebook or even the news, our government. There's so many, so many, so many things that we can intercede for and pray for. And the last part of that is don't forget to pray in tongues. If you haven't been baptized in the spirit, it's really powerful. Before, I used to be taught that that wasn't real or something because I went to a good Baptist church. Um, and they, somebody even came to me and said, if I don't speak in tongues, I don't have the Holy Spirit. I said, yes, I do, because I knew I had the Holy Spirit, but I did not speak in tongues. So I really prayed, and God opened up understanding about that, and I read a John Osteen book um, about how to pray in tongues. And I don't even talk to myself during the day. If I'm by myself, I don't talk. It's just quiet. Where a lot of people, it's normal to talk to yourself, and it's okay if you do that. Just don't answer yourself. <laughs> no, but anyway, I, it was hard for me to talk out loud because I wasn't used to that. But what John Osteen said, and in the background, I had the Bill Gaither trio music playing, and, and he said, you just have to open your mouth and start praying. Let God fill it. It's like, oh, okay. So I did. I started like singing with the song, and what he said was just, let God speak. And so I did. And I got baptized in the spirit and I knew it was God. And yet the next day I was still a little nervous about it. Like, was that really you, God? And yet the Bible says, if we ask the Lord for 
Well, if a son asks his father for uh, bread, will he give him a stone? No, I was asking God for something. Is he going to give me a stone? If a son asks a father for, what's the other thing? Will he give him a snake? No, God gives us what we ask for. And then that night at dinner, it was so funny, and people think this is weird. I think I still have it, but we had baked potatoes and something. And when I peeled the skin off my baked potato and put it aside on my plate, I, it, I had a second look because it looked just like a dove. You know how you see the Holy Spirit dove um, on pictures and things? And um, I don't see one. But anyway, that potato skin looked like a dove. And I, went, and I knew that was God telling me, yeah, this is real. <laughs> it's like, whoa, I saved that. I stuck it on an index card and probably have it somewhere still. I don't know. But God confirms his word too. He, he does. He promises what he says he will do. And then he confirms his word through other people or through a baked potato skin. Who knows, you know? God is so good. Okay. I'm going to do this real quick. Some practical tips. You can use one or all of them. Um, number one is we have to put ourselves aside. If we need to encourage ourselves in the Lord, it doesn't do any good to sit around and be so sorry about all the bad things that are happening and we don't have any money and we're somebody's sick and we need some clothes and my house is dirty and you know, it doesn't do any good to be so self-centered that that's all we're thinking about. If we want to encourage ourselves in the Lord, we have to take our eyes off ourselves and just put them on the Lord. In fact, um, sometimes we dread to do something. Oh, I dread to do the dishes. I dread to vacuum the floor. You know what that dread is? I heard from a, one of my favorite teachers. She said that one day she was saying that, and God told her, you know what? Dread is a spirit because it's not of God, is it? Dread wouldn't be of God. It's a spirit that makes you feel like not doing anything or you just hate to do that or whatever. And so whenever I feel like that, I just go, lucid, Jesus' name. I'm not giving into that because it's something that's trying to drag us down, even just the spirit of dread. So anyway, I learned that. I thought, well, that's good. So don't dread doing your dishes. Just get up and do them and be glad that you have them and that you have hot water. Um, anyway, so we need to put ourselves aside. Don't feel sorry for ourselves. Uh, we think we can't change in an instant, but there's a story of a lady that was yelling at her kids and somebody knocked on the door and she was like really blowing her stack. She went to the door and saw that her, her pastor was on the other side of the door. All of a sudden she opens the door. Well, come in, pastor, come in and let me get you something to drink. And the Lord showed her, we can control ourselves. We just don't want to sometimes, but we can and we need to start doing that because that is a fruit of the spirit that God's given us, self-control. And like I said, but if we get out of ourselves, you know, quit thinking so much about ourselves, it'll be easier to obey the Holy Spirit all the time, even so you're not yelling at your kids, you know. So anyway, we can control ourselves. In fact, my kids used to listen to what, fruit of the spirit or music machine. And there was a song called Self-Control. Um, said self-control I control I can control myself can you remember the words Danny I can't really but those songs are so good if you have kids you can still get those music machine um, CDs and stuff they are so good to teach kids the fruit of the spirit and a lot of other things about have patience have patience don't be in such a hurry remember that one Danny yeah, yeah. <laughs> and those things still go through my head and my goodness that was 60 years ago that we used to listen to those. So do those things because they plant themselves in you and they come up when you need them. If we die to ourselves. Okay. And then there's a verse that says we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. We need to pay attention to what's going on and realize when it's not God. It could be our flesh and that's the flesh, but it could actually be Satan's devices because if you haven't read the screw tape letters, it's really good. It talks about how tricky the enemy is. He uses the same tricks over and over. But even in churches, he doesn't care if you go as long as you don't fellowship with anybody or learn anything, you know. But don't go and start getting on fire for God, you know. So even some of the good things we do, the devil doesn't care. So we need to be careful that we're not um, taken off into something he's tricking us into. Because that's where it starts, too, people kind of slip into sin and they don't really slip because right at the beginning they know they shouldn't really do that 
but they do that and that and that, and pretty soon, whoop, they're gone. And so we need to be not ignorant of Satan's devices, just like the word um, dread. Don't be ignorant of the different things he tries. Okay, also we need to speak life. Life and death are in the power of our tongue. Uh, we need to ask for joy. James says, the shape, the hope of the righteous shall be gladness. Um, Nehemiah 8.10, we all know that one, I think. The joy of the Lord is our strength. If we're not feeling very strong, we're probably not feeling very joyful. And we need to say, Lord, restore to me the joy of my salvation. You know, that's scripture too. Um, the Bible has scripture for everything. It's pretty amazing. Um, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Um, the word will be life to your bones. All through the word, it just talks about how important the word is. Okay, then I put also soak in some encouraging scripture. I like the word soak because it just, it just seems so cozy. And so I'm not really a bath person and I'm not a swimmer either, but I, I do like to sit in like a hot tub and read a book, you know, soaking. And I like when I'm cuddled up in my bed and my blankets, to me, I'm wrapped in my comforter soaking in God. I love the word soak. It just, just has a lot of power in it, I think, where, because we don't take time to stop and soak. We're always running around here and here and here and here. But if we stop and soak in God's word and what he's given us, it'll be really refreshing. Okay. And I put a uh, Bible. You soak in the word. Uh, there's a lot of YouTube really pretty. In fact, over at the house right now, because I have two phones, uh, my other phone is not operating as a phone, but it still works on, on um, internet. So I have songs over there playing for the birds. And it's, it's beautiful worship songs with bird sounds in the background. And they love it. Carrie always plays, um, I don't know, a couple songs for them that they love. And he'll be singing and they start dancing back and forth. So we like to take care of our birds too. But anyway, for us, we need to do that too. Listen to good music on YouTube. Maranatha singers are really good. That's way back a long time ago. Almost all their music is based on scripture. Their songs are scripture. And then I wrote down to uh, the book of Philippians was written while Paul was in jail. How would we do if we were in, especially that kind of jail? It's not like our jail. It was like a cave with stuff in it. We wouldn't want to be there. But he wrote the book of Philippians there. And it talks about joy and how he had joy. So that's a good one to read and just go, yeah, my circumstances are nothing compared to what he went through. And then David wrote Psalms, played the harp while he was just out watching the sheep. You know, even for us, it's a good example. We need to sometimes just sit outside and watch the sheep and sing music unto the Lord, right? We don't have any sheep, but you can sit outside and watch the birds. Another thing we can do is get some good fellowship and counsel from strong, steady believers. And I put, because this is very important, even those who might chastise us or kick us in the pants, right? Isn't it good to have friends like that? We can, they can say, what are you doing? That is not good. You want to get up out of that mud puddle, you know? And I have friends like that too. And I really appreciate them and they're not afraid to talk to me. And so I hope you all have friends like that because it's important because they also absolutely stand with you the whole time. But they're not going to go, oh, poor you. Yeah, I know that's so hard. I'm sorry you have to go through that. <laughs> I want people that are going to say, you know what? God said that he'll help you through this. Now get up and be glad. <laughs> you know, don't you want people like that? Yeah. Or even somebody who makes you laugh. There was a friend I used to have, and I don't know where she is now, but almost every time I was with her, she made me laugh. In fact, Sherry does that with me. She and Sherry and I will laugh about stuff. And it's like laughing is so good for your soul. Find somebody you can laugh with. Okay, and then this is something the Lord showed me when my kids were little. Now I was so busy every day. Um, look for others having a worse day and encourage them. I remember, I don't know what was going on with me, but I remember the Lord say, telling me, call somebody and just encourage them. And so I'd call somebody and they were having a really bad day too. But I knew how to get through it by praying for them and encouraging them. And, and God said, see, it's not all about you. And it really isn't. That's a big key. It's not about us. It's about what we're here for to encourage other people and strengthen other people. 
And that was a, God taught me that a long time ago. Stop looking at myself and call somebody else. So Marvin, if you get a call from me, it's probably because I'm feeling sorry for myself and I need to talk to somebody. <laughs> but those friends are important. Okay, and again, be prepared. Think on good things all day long, every day. As soon as you start recognizing that you're having a weird thought or a sad thought or a, you wake up and you had some weird dream, um, get rid of it. And I've always said, even to my kids, if you start thinking something, especially if it's a habitual thing, like I'm so terrible or I can't do anything or whatever, get scripture or encouragement from the Lord that says, yes, you can. Through Christ, I can do all things. And when that first inkling of the negative thought starts coming into your head, catch it and stop it and say the other thing instead. Be prepared. Don't just go, yeah, that's that thought I keep having. What am I going to do? You know, be prepared. All through life, we need to be prepared. We really do. Otherwise, we get sucked in. Again, that's a time to remember everything God has done before you. So if you're thinking, oh man, this such and such a bill is due. I don't know what I'm going to do. Instead, just say, Lord, I've already prayed about that. And I know that you are my provider and I thank you for it in Jesus' name. And then get busy doing whatever he wants you to do. Okay, casting down imaginations. That's kind of what I was talking about. Because there's a verse, and I never can remember the scripture, but it's in Corinthians something. It says, um, it actually comes in a process cast down imaginations because your imaginations are the first thing that try to come in because if you take those imaginations and start thinking about them they become like a, a video a theater you know we start really seeing what's going to happen if such and such after that we think about it so much that it becomes a stronghold so this verse talks about um, imaginations and strongholds and I should have looked it up but a stronghold is a lot harder to get rid of it's like um, if you have a habit, smoking or something, once you start it and you're continuing in it, pretty soon it's, it's got a hold of you. It's a stronghold, not only physically, but spiritually. And anything that um, the enemy doesn't or does want us to do is kind of like that. He sneaks it in there. So it becomes a stronghold. And after that, you have to just totally break it to get out of there. And... Um, that's why I tell, told my kids, too, it's better. People say when kids are in Christian school, they're just in a greenhouse. It's like, no, yeah, they are, but it's a good thing because if we can protect those kids and help them grow up clear as long as we can, because out there is a wilderness and a craziness, and that's what we need to do with ourselves. Protect, us, protect ourselves from, like if you have a family history of alcoholism or something, which I don't, thank God. But if you do, you have to be careful that that stuff doesn't try to come and attract you also. And you do that by casting down imaginations. Because if you start thinking about it, it becomes stronger. And then it becomes a stronghold. And I forgot the last part. But it's much easier to catch it at the very beginning than wait until it becomes deep-rooted in yourself. So, again, be prepared. That goes with that. Okay. Do, do, do. If we start worried about money, we can say, my God shall supply. If we worry about health, we can say, by his stripes I am healed. And then also do something that makes you happy. I know a few of us that like to just sit and crochet. And I like to listen to books on tape. And I do like to cook sometimes. Um, Carrie loves to go outside and walk around and take care of the property. You know, that's very refreshing for him. Do something that makes you happy. If you're starting to feel bad and you need to encourage yourself in the Lord, get up and do something. Don't just sit there and wallow in it. Um, find joy in God's creation. Groom your pets. Isn't that a fun thing? Like if I know when we used to have Buddy, I'd love to just sit and brush his hair. You know, it was just so, it was comforting to me. You like that too, Amanda, right? You know, it's very comforting to groom your pets. Do something that will lift you up. Um, read a good book, pull out a craft or a hobby, clean out some of your stuff and give it to those in need. Uh, pray for others. Countries without clean water, no good food. Christians being persecuted. We have that. You know, it's hard to believe in our country as bad as it's getting sometimes. There's still Christians in other countries that are just really being persecuted. We need to pray for them. 
uh, play some music that makes you happy, whether it's reggae, da, 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 you know, worship, praise, um, redos like the apologetics that Carrie keeps playing for offering because they're just, they're peppy and they're fun. Remember, you're not alone. And as you practice, you will eventually quickly learn to move on in the Lord. And I, like I said, when you're 50, LOL, <laughs> the older we get, hopefully, the stronger we are in the Lord. And above all, we need to trust God. Okay, there's one um, scripture that we all know, uh, Psalm 23, so I'm not going to read that one after all. Oh, one thing I put is, praying in tongues keeps your engine humming along, <laughs> right? When you're praying in tongues, you're like humming along. Okay, anyway, Psalm 23, we all pretty much, much know that one. But if you really read it slowly, the Lord is my shepherd. That's cool right there. I shall not want. Wow, that's a promise. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He doesn't make me lay down out in the wet, soggy, dead grass. Uh, he leads me beside the still waters. That means not tumbling where you're going to fall in or something. It's still and peaceful. How many of you like to sit by a still, peaceful river or lake? Oh, I love that. Huh? With a fishing pole. Yeah, with a fishing pole. Or a book. He restores my soul. Our soul, of course, is our fleshly part that is restored day by day by hearing the word of God and practicing it and letting God work in us. But he does that. He, be, he will finish what he has begun. That was another encouraging thing to me when I read that. It's like, wow, that's a scripture. And I don't know the scripture again. But it says that he which has begun a good work and you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That's pretty awesome. Okay. He restores my soul. I'm going to get a drink, sorry. Did good so far. Okay, he, re he leads me in the path, paths of righteousness, day by day as we do things. We're walking in his paths for his name's sake. The morning when we say, Lord, guide my steps today, as we start walking in the paths we have for the day, he's right there with us for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And when I read that too, it, I, it reminded me that it just says the valley of the shadow of death. It doesn't necessarily even mean death, but sometimes there are shadows around us and we feel like, like it's death. But we have to remember that God is the light and he will show light on those shadows. And we, we can walk through that valley and fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. His rod is not going to beat us. His rod is going to guide us. And so is his staff. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. And we always say, surely, come follow me. <laughs> no, surely, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life. And I like that too. My, my mug that I drink out of at home says that verse on it. How his, um, he follows me. He's, he's ahead of us, but he also follows us. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's kind of cool. It's like that's surrounding me. Mercy is so good. It's what we don't deserve that God gives us. He takes care of us. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, the second one is Psalm 91. All of you have read that, probably especially recently. Um, I'm going to read it out of the message, and that's pretty much it for today because I just want people to really get into the Word, study the Word, meditate on the Word, be ready. I, we see too many casualties of people that weren't ready when something hit, you know? And it, it takes effort to get ready. Because it's so easy to just slide by and enjoy your day and read books and magazines and go shopping and, you know, but we need to spend that time with God. That is so, so important. One of my friends um, said in the last couple, probably last couple years, she has just felt so different about God. I said, me too. It's like, he's not just here. He's like, here. <laughs> You know, as we go places, he's here, he's in my body, he's around me. And we know that in our head, but it takes a while for it to really soak in and know that he's really with us. And even when you take a trip, God guides your steps. You know, he opens doors for you. You see things that God does. He lets us 
see a moose in the middle of Montana out on a road somewhere in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> you know, God does those things, and it's so amazing and wonderful. Okay, this is Psalm 91 in the Message Bible. I'm going to actually read it out of my Bible. And like I said, I love to underline, circle, highlight, and so that's what my Bible looks like for Psalm 91. I love it. It just means a lot to me. Okay, I wrote it out here, but it's not the same. I love my Bible. This is such a good Bible. It feels so good. Oh, that's one thing I was going to say back when I was talking about different translations. If you feel kind of stuck, like you've already, because I actually did that. I'm embarrassed to say it. But I felt like, oh, I don't want to read the Bible. I already know what it says. And I don't mean that badly against God, but I really kind of felt like that. Because I, I had read the Bible for 50 years, you know. I had Bible school and good teaching as I, as my kids grew up. And I was always in the Word, around the Word. And I really got to the point where, eh, I don't want to read the Bible because I already know what it says. That sounds so terrible. But my, maybe somebody else has been there. So anyway, then I found this message Bible. Like I said, first was the Passion Bible. And I really like that. But then... Um, Peggy started bringing the message because Sherry did, right? And every time Peggy would read something out of it, we were just cracking up because it was so funny. It's like, <laughs> that is a cool translation. So as long as you have a good foundation in one of the basic um, translations, supposedly this is a translation, I don't know if it is or if it's a more of a paraphrase, but the main translations, the King James, New King James, all those ones that have been around for a long time, even the Amplified, are very um, strong, steadfast, secure. So in case you read this and you go, whoa, that's kind of weird, go back to the King James, see what it says. But I really like it because I know what the other says. Okay, Psalm 91. And this one is a psalm, psalm that you can turn into a prayer. I'm going to read it the way it is first, and then I'm going to tell you how you can do the prayer. Okay, it says, You who sit down in the high God's presence, spend the night in Shaddai's shadow. Say this. That's us. We spend the night in God's presence. Say this. God, you're my refuge. I trust in you, and I'm safe. That's right. He rescues you from hidden traps. Isn't that cool? He shields you from deadly hazards. We have the armor of God on, don't we? His huge outstretched arms protect you. Can you just, every time we worship God and stuff, I see that picture back there by Beth Swigert. Um, Jesus is standing there with his hands open. And that's, that's what he is. He wants us right here. Um, his huge outstretched arms protect you. Under them, you're perfectly safe. His arms fend off all harm. If you're in the Lord's arms, nothing can hurt you. Fear nothing, not wild wolves in the night, nor flying arrows in the day, nor disease, not disease that prowls through the darkness. That means 24 hours, day and night. Nothing, not disaster that erupts at high noon. There we go. Night, day, darkness, high noon. Even though others succumb all around, drop like flies right and left. See, I think that's funny. <laughs> um, no harm will even graze you. You'll stand untouched. Watch it all from a distance. Watch the wicked turn into corpses. Um, one thing I wanted to say about this is there was a true story, as far as I know, about a, a fellow that was in the service, and he had a little pocket New Testament in his um, shirt out on the wharf field, and <clears throat> he um, got shot. But the bullet only went into his pocket Bible. And when they checked it later, the bullet had stopped right there where it says, um, do, do, do. in the other versions, it says, 10,000 shall fall at the right, and, but it shall not come nigh you. Um, that, the bullet had stopped right there, halfway through his little pocket New Testament. And it showed that God really had, had protected him. It's like, wow, because things were flying around him, but he was protected. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Yes, because God's your refuge, the high God, your very own home. Evil can't get close to you. Harm can't get through the door. 
He ordered his angels to guard you wherever you go. That's in Hebrews 1.14. If you stumble, they'll catch you. Their job is to keep you from falling. And I have a quick story about my other son, one of my sons, Andrew, down in Oregon. You've probably all heard it before. He was driving on a freeway, blue, uh, blue Mountain Pass or something. A deer or something ran in front of him. And I probably won't get this all right. But anyway, he um, you know, slammed on his brakes. Anyway, his car, um, a truck up in front of him and somebody behind him saw what happened. His, so he swerved when he didn't want to hit the animal. His car turned on its side and slid for a ways. And I don't know if it turned the other way. Anyway, I ended up doing that. No windows were broken. He was fine. Somebody came and helped him out. I think he ended up down here, so it must have been this way. Somebody helped pull him out of the car. He never had any aches or pains. Um, he had a seatbelt on, and he had a whole bunch of angels in that car. <laughs> and when he fixed the car, it didn't cost him hardly anything to fix it because the paint was just scratched. That's unbelievable. That is a God thing. And when I know, that gives you comfort as a mother when your kids are out driving truck or, you know, whatever they do as a job. You can know that God is with them because you've raised them right. And even if you didn't get to raise them right, it's okay. Because right now where you are, God will take care of them. So anyway, I love that part. He, his angels will guard you wherever you go. If you, they stumble, if you stumble, they'll catch you. Their job is to keep you from falling. You'll walk unharmed among lions and snakes. I don't want that part. Lions, maybe. Snakes, uh-uh and kick young lions and serpents from the path. If you will hold on to me for dear life, says God. Isn't that sweet? God just says, if you'll hold on to me for dear life. It's like a daddy taking his child across a stream or something. If you hold on to me for dear life, says God, I'll get you out of any trouble. I'll give you the best of care. If you'll only get to know and trust me. Isn't that cool? That's like him whispering to us. If we just will get to know and trust him, he is so precious to us. Call me and I'll answer. Be at your side in bad times. I'll rescue you, then throw you a party. I'll give you a long life, give you a long drink of salvation. Isn't that beautiful? I just love it. So that's one reason I like this. And so real quick, one way you can pray that, you can say, you know, God, you're my refuge. I trust in you. I'm safe. That's right, you rescue me from hidden traps. You shield me from deadly hazards. Your huge outstretched arms protect me. Under them, I'm perfectly safe. Your arms fend off all harm. So you can pray it as a prayer um, of yourself. My thing's falling off. Is it still okay? Okay. Anyway, um, that's what I wanted to say today. I just want to encourage everybody, get in the word. Every day, every day, all day, every day. <laughs> and it's harder when you have to go to work or you have to, you know, we all have a lot of things that we need to do, responsibilities, but they're just so much easier if we just take the word of God first and keep it with us all through the day and let God keep on working in us and help us be strong and be more than a conqueror and know that tough times never last, but tough time, but tough people do and we're tough with God. You know, remember those things are very important. That's all for today, but let's close in prayer. Father, we just thank you so much for each person that is able to hear this sermon, Father. We ask that you t they take it to heart and spend time with you. You're calling us. You're wanting us. You're, your desire is for us, Father. And we pray that our hearts will be turned to you and just really um, spend time with you every day. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for being with us the rest of today. And keep our eyes open to what you might have us to be doing. Help us see people through your eyes, Father. We thank you again for your word and for this place. In Jesus' name, amen.